Hi, this is Robert from Qit. Today, I'm going to explain our Actions and Triggers framework. This powerful framework provides the precision to protect specific sections of your website, show different waiting room themes depending on where visitors enter, allow SEO crawlers to access your protected site, and more. Actions and Triggers framework consists of three parts. First, define a trigger, which is a rule that can be true or false. When the trigger rule is true, it initiates the action rule, which specifies what should be done. This action pairs with your waiting room configuration to control visitor flow. Let's take an example, and then we'll see how it looks in the system. Assume I'm a ticketing organization. I have two shows I'm selling tickets for. Both use the same payment gateway, so I'm using one waiting room to protect both but I want visitors for each show to see a waiting room theme tailored to that show. From my Go Queue at Home screen, I can configure the logic under Integration on the left-hand menu. I'll start by creating a trigger. Remember, we want this rule to be true to prompt the action. These are AND OR operators which provide even greater customization of the configuration logic using various criteria, including URL, JavaScript, HTTP header values, cookie data, and user agents. In my case, each show has its own URL, so I'll create one trigger for landing page A and one trigger for landing page B. Next, I'll move to my actions. My action is what I want to happen when my trigger rule is true. In this case, I want each trigger rule to show a different custom layout. In my action, I select the waiting room and the layout or theme I want shown. Then I select which trigger or triggers should prompt this action. Note that if I select multiple triggers, just one trigger being true is enough to prompt this action. If I want a trigger that is true on all pages protected by my integration method, I can select All Pages, queue it. I'll move back to my Actions Overview and see the two actions I've just created. Note that the actions are order dependent and can be reordered as necessary. I want to confirm where Qit is setting the session cookie. This is important if my visitor's journey starts on one subdomain and ends on another subdomain. The cookie validity determines how long my visitors have in the protected section of my site before being sent back to the waiting room. If I'd like to extend this cookie, as long as the visitor is active, I can check the Extend Cookie Validity box. The Remove Qit Parameters box is only applicable for JavaScript implementations, so I'll leave these settings on the default. Before any of my changes are live, I'll need to publish them. I can do this from the Overview tab. Here I need to provide a meaningful description of the integration update I'm publishing. I'll then publish my changes. Also on the Overview tab, I can see a history of the 10 most recent configuration updates. Each update has a downloadable file, which I can save to my computer as a template for future changes. If I want to import a configuration based on this file, I can do so in the Import tab. In the final tab here, called Settings, 
I can select which version of Qt to integrate with and can confirm where on my infrastructure the integration configuration file will be published. Now, if I navigate to my website, I can see that the first show has one waiting room theme and the second show has another one, even though both are using the same waiting room. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and that you have a better understanding of how Qit's actions and triggers can fit your needs. Don't forget to check out our guides and white papers, and please contact support at q-it.com if you have any questions. Thank you.